Again, you're, uh, you're just joining us. This is SPSPN.com. We will be broadcasting live every game next week. We travel. We take the show on the road Ooh, way up travel, to Mount Vernon show. High School. The Bulldogs of Mount Vernon. So tune in. 7 o'clock starts, 650 We'll have uh, Mr. Tim Boyle, by the way. We, we talked to Mr. Boyle at halftime. Want to make sure I uh, wish him well, him and his lovely wife. Are we taking the STSPN RV up there? Absolutely. Take the big STSPN.com bus. But a friendly reminder, everybody, SnohomishTimes.com. All your local news, anything you want to know about Glacier Peak football, and also West Coast 3A. Just log on to SnohomishTimes.com. Also look for highlights of this game sometime towards the beginning of the week, we hope. Mr. Elvig always does a great job doing that. Scott Oshman along with John McClain here. Second half action. Happy to be here, Scott. We're happy to have you. Thanks for moving chairs. John McClain, our usual statistician and everything. Here's the kickoff. Deep to receive for the Hawks. Looks like a Mason Stone. He's up the middle. He's got some room and then met by a group around the 35 at Terrace, but a nice 25 or 6-yard return for Terrace. Timmy Douglas and Brandon Hershey on the tackle for Glacier Peak. Yeah, they're lucky. They made him kind of hop there, kind of think about changing directions because if he would have just kept going straight, he would have mowed some people over. Had some room to run there and then ran into a little, a little trouble. Looked like his own players got in his way, but... And they're going to start at the 38-yard line as Bo Kennedy, the quarterback, fakes the hand up now. Devontae Jones, and he is hit, but he's still up. Timmy Douglas had him by the ankles and let go. They'll give him forward progress. Great play by the Grizzly D. Timmy Douglas in the backfield early, had him around the legs, but he shook him off. I think Terrace's plan for the second half is clean snaps. Absolutely. Would we count four muff No, snaps? I think it was five or six. Five or six. My math isn't very good, as you know. Well. <laughs> Drew Liner, the freight liner, on the tackle. Timmy Douglas, we joke, is the Rudy. The kid's 5'7". He's one of the smaller kids out there, 175, but he is a heck of a player. Oh. Now a bumbled shotgun. It's fumbled. Bumbled. There's Timmy oh, Douglas Timmy on it. They get the recovery. Glacier Peak ball at the Terrace 20-yard line. Boy, the snaps have just doesn't matter if it's shotgun or under center. They can't get a snap. Becerra was in there. Wasn't that him? Becerra was in there, number 20, the backup quarterback, usually the junior. Not what Terrace needed on the first series coming out of the second half. Timmy Douglas, though, is he on in on every play? I mean, he, he is in the mix. He is. He is a tremendous athlete. The coaches absolutely love Timmy Douglas. Right place at the right time. So GP takes over where if you're Terrace, you don't want him on the Terrace 22-yard line. David Lenny hands off to Alex Caribou. He's met in the backfield 56. by Brock Hornbuckle for Terrace. The Buckle. Hornbuckle. That's a great football name. Wow. So great play by both Jordan Raymore and Brock Hornbuckle. Hornbuckle's a junior, second and now 11. Loss of one, Linny. Got time, over the middle, tie. Ooh, Nevin Nelson. Incomplete to Nelson, and he was, I don't know what happened if he would have caught that ball. He would have been laid out. Pa Nui and Mason Stone, I believe it might have been Stone, was about to was just about to lower, jack him. I lower mean. the boom. <laughs> and but poor he really, Nelson got laid he, out earlier in the year. Since he missed the catch, though, he didn't hit him that hard. Just kind of let him know he was there. Brings up third and level, and Blenny back to pass. He does off, oh. tips off Brandon Hershey, almost recovered by Nelson. Again, Mason Stone in the middle of it. Things were getting dicey down there, McLean. Yeah, uh, but Glacier Peak's making Terrace work, right? That Terrace defensive backfield is is really having a hard time because there's receivers all over the place, and most of them are open. 
to a certain extent. Yeah, absolutely. 10-25 opening minutes here. They're going to go for a field goal, and it's going to be David Lenny. We told you earlier he's got college. It's a 40-yard field goal. College, uh, they're even talking Division One type of leg here. It's up, and it is good. Just barely. That hit the horizontal. David Lenny, the senior quarterback, also kicker, punches one through. What would we say? 40, 40 yards. 40-yard 40 field goal. Yeah, right on the 30-yard line. But he didn't, didn't leave himself much cushion on that. I mean, that thing came right down on the crossbar. Makes it Glacier Peak 38, Montlake Terrace 0 here. Early action in the second half. This is going to be a real fast second half, Scott. Cause we get Why over is that, John? Because, <laughs> Scott, in high school football, <laughs> if you have a 40-point lead, I believe, it's a running clock. I did not know that. Normally, Tim Boyle, who's absolutely full of high school sports, especially football information, would be giving you something like that. Me, since I'm just full of it, typically wouldn't be able to give you that. But tonight, I have it from a good source that that's the way that goes. Well, they're at 38 nothing again, 10-24. Hope you're enjoying the action here. Homecoming night for Glacier Peak. The big dance and the big event tomorrow night. If you're around the area, look at your uh, local restaurants. I'm sure you'll see a lot of people, a lot of young kids dressed up. Corwin, deep in it, gets into the end zone past Stone. And that will be a touchback, so they will start their second series of the second half on the 20-yard line. That ball traveled a long way for a line drive like that. Nice kick by number four, Branson Corwin, a sophomore, so he's got a lot of years to kick the ball for Glacier Peak. Still looks like most of the starters are in. You see on the near side there defensively, Marcus Hurd. Part of the court, here's Bo Kennedy. Hands it off to Downs. Drives forward for a hard couple of yards. Once again, gang tackled by GP. Chris Becerra getting a lot of action on the defense. Also with Austin Smedrude. Smeds. See if he can... Uh, it be interesting to see if we see Palmer on the offensive side going for Glacier Peak, if we get to see Smedrudes and Michael Palmer and Becerra. I think you're going to sometime here in the second half. Second and eight for Terrace. Fumbled snap again. And it is back. It's on the ground. Oh, it's it's picked up by Glacier Peak. He stumbles. He's in for a touchdown. 35 Austin Smedrud Smed speak of the devil with a recovery and a touchdown for Glacier Peak. Second defensive touchdown of the game, right? It is. They had a block punt and recovered in the touchdown. Timmy Douglas in the first half. And Smedrud there. The what is that? The seventh bumbled snap snap? Easily. We don't have an official stat for that, but poor Mountlake Terrace, they just can't get a handle on the ball as you see Corin Branson on for the extra point. Brandon, excuse me, Branson Corwin kicks it through, almost blocked. Boy, yeah, he high, killed that one. That high was, snap. That's deep into the dark of the night, and that is good. And now you're, you're – absolute incredible information earlier could now come to play 45 to nothing glacier peak up huge on mount lake terrace i mean that was a deep kick for a field goal and those ball boys number 13 especially was all over that that kid is fast <laughs> what is he eight years old i mean sign him up yeah get him into camp the second fumble of the second half from Mount Lake Terrace, and the poor, the poor Hawks just cannot get it going here tonight. Yeah, they can't catch a break, but they're, but they're a young team. They're learning. All but five guys are coming back next year. They'll, Coach, gr they'll grow. They'll be bigger, faster, stronger. Coach Tony Yamayam knows he knew coming into this year that he was going to have a very young team, very inexpe uh, inexperienced. 
and it was going to be a struggle this year. But he also said that the kids have a good attitude, especially Devontae Downs having a big year last year and now coming in this year. A little line drive from Branson, picked up by Stone, makes a couple moves, and he's kind of horse collared down at the 20 yard line by guess who? Becerra. Becerra and Timmy Douglas. Oh, that was, yeah, I, I got that wrong. It was Douglas. That was a good hit by Douglas, too. Timmy Douglas just all over the field tonight. So let's see if Terrace can snap the ball with any regularity. I mean, it doesn't matter whether it's shotgun. And I think number 72, the big kid, he's a sophomore, though. Pa Nui, older brother, is the center. Bo Kennedy gets a hold of that one. Back to pass. Makes the pass. It's caught. Number two. Nathan Evanson. Bussing on the tackle. Nathan Bussing on the tackle. What a nice stick. He's a youngin. He was excited. He hit him hard, wrapped him up, drove him back about six yards. Gain of four on the play for Montlake Terrace. They'll have second and six at their own 24. Didn't give him a chance to run that at all. Bo Kennedy under snap. Now he hands off Devontae Jones and Smedrude introduces himself again up at about the 25-yard line and drags him down there. Smeds couldn't bring him down by himself, though. He just grabbed him and held on until everybody else could get there. Devontae Downs, their key running back. Again, just a sophomore. As we see, we're always the, we have a huge flashing red light whenever Todd Elvig's son gets in the game. Josh Elvig now on the defensive line. Looks like he's going to go up against Pa Nui. Pushes him back. Here's Bo Kennedy getting Ooh. chased by Douglas. Let's it go. Incomplete. A little short. Attended for number four, Isaiah Green on the play. Brandon Hershey on the coverage for Glacier Peak. Timmy Douglas again, though, John. How was that? The, <laughs> he was on the shoe tops of Mr. Kennedy. Oh, yeah. How does he get through the line that fast? I don't know. He just... He just slithers through. He, he does that all year long. Much bigger players. And now we're back through. punting again. Another punt for Mount Lake Terrace. Pahanui. Nice punt. Nice kick. Trey Chambers picks up the midstripe full speed ahead and is wrestled down and thrown out of bounds at the Terrace 37-yard line where they will start another series at 45 to nothing with 642 left in the third quarter. Yeah, he caught that ball at full stride and was just running. If he could have just got around one more player, he could have been off and gone. Again, tough for Terrace. They're getting the ball again. I mean, they, it's been that the end of the first half was the only time Glacier Peak started deep in their own territory. They're going to get the ball here. Becerra at quarterback. It's quarterback watch again. Absolutely. You're going to see a lot of that. Here's Becerra. Now ha fakes it. He did get it to uh, Michael Palmer, and he's wrapped up in the backfield. Great job by Tyler Webster for Terrace deep in the backfield for a four-yard loss. This is where the ball game gets confusing because we're trying to figure out who's in and who's not. Bear <laughs> with us at home as the rosters are flying around the booth tonight. <laughs> deep in the game here. Jump start. They're going to have to call that. That was Isaiah Green. The defensive end for Terrace looked like he jumped off sides. That's one thing we haven't seen much in the game tonight. We have seen very little yellow, right? I mean, is this the second flag? I think it is. Actually, very, very uh, well played. Very no, no penalties tonight. And that has been an issue for Glacier Peak. I don't know about Montlake Terrace, but... Becerra now back to pass, getting rushed, has to get it away. It bounces oh. off him. Picked off, picked off, picked off. He's, off he's gone. He's gone to the 40-30. Becerra trying to catch him. 10. Nobody will catch him. Touchdown, Mount Lake Terrace. And that is Jalen Pahanui. Yeah, that was a tip ball. And then picked up by the defensive back, Pahanui. 
Jalen Paha knew he has had a couple opportunities slip through his fingers, no pun intended, but that one right in the bread basket, and he took that 60-some yards to Pater. To the house. Of course, now the Terrace defense has outscored their offense. <laughs> That's true. That's never a good sign, Scott. Well, Mr. Becerra, he had it tipped. That wasn't a bad pass. It was just a little high. Well, we get to see Pahanui, the guy who scored the touchdown, kick the extra point. It's up, and it looks good from here. And it is. So with 4.55 left to go in the third quarter, Mount Lake Terrace Hawks finally on the board with seven points, although Glacier Peak has 45. Trying to see, it looked like he was intended receiver on Becerra on that one was Marcus Hurd, tipped off his fingertips. Pa Nui was yeah. the recipient of that gift. Yeah, it was a high pass. It was up high to Hurd. He wasn't able to get a hold of it. He had both hands on it, but I don't think he could wrap his fingers around it. Tip ball, Pa Nui picks it up, and he was he was moving good when he, when he caught that ball, too, and then he just never stopped down the sideline. There was no way Becerra was going to catch it. He just didn't have the angle. Well, that's the first big play besides the fake punt. And uh, not often you see a pick six from the the midfield territory, yeah. Close to midfield. That may be just what Terrace needs. They got to get pumped up a little bit, make some key plays, score a few points, and go home feeling good. Evan Nelson now in deep to receive along with junior Sean Elledge. Sean Elledge on the screen here. He'll be on the far side of the field. Pahanui, Jalen, a very busy man. Scored the touchdown, did the kickoff. Oh, and he thought he missed that one, but he gets a nice one. That's Evan Nelson, is 23. He breaks through. Pahanui. Pahanui the only one he Trips him up, great open field tackle by Pahanui, or else Mr. Nelson was looking at touchdown number two tonight. That's the senior, man, and he's just a squirt. Boy, he found a little tunnel, and he got through there in a hurry. Ah, but number 11, Jalen Pahanui, man, he's the entire team on, <laughs> for Terrace right now. He is doing it all. Yeah, yeah. Very lucky to catch him. So, Glacier Peak now starting first and 10 at the Terrace 45. Becerra in the quarterback. Keeps it now upfield, and he is met hard by Jordan Raymore. And others. And others. Terrace. Good job there. This is where we notice the pace of the offense slows, though, right? Without, without Lenny in to keep that pace just clicking. For Terrace, again, 58. Blake Oakley, a sophomore on the tackle as well. <laughs> Becerra, now Palmer on the right side. Got some room, but he's caught up. Jordan Raymore again tracks him down. Devante jo- Downs also there on the tackle. Give him a pickup of about four or five. Again, no huddle. Brings up a third down and six. The Terrace 41-yard line. Becerra, low snap. Now he's got traffic. Now takes it on. Oh, he's reaching. He will get a first down. And he's brought down there at the 35. Pushed back by Isaiah Green. Jordan Brown also on the tackle. Nice job by the Terrace defense. They will give him a first down. Had to get just past the 35, and he did right to the 34. So, Scott, we have a new uh, high school score from around the league. Looks like we got Oak Harbor 28, Mount Vernon 27 at the Ooh. half. That's a close game. Hands off to Palmer again, I believe. Oh, and we have a flag. He was tackled in the backfield. In a loss of... 
a half a yard or one yard, but there's a flag down. We'll see if we can see what it is. Oak Harbor 28, Mount Vernon 27. We faced, uh, excuse me, Glacier Peak faces Mount Vernon next week. They are doing pretty well in their own league, actually. They haven't played anybody in their own league. I'm sorry, they're about 3-1, and one, I think, 4-1. and one. What's the call here, John? It's on Terrace. As they get five yards now and repeat a first down, first and six. The junior, Chris Becerra with the ball, hands off to Palmer. He's held up and backed up line. Gain of zero. by Tyler Webster, Jordan Raymer, and the gang from the Hawks and Terrace stuffing the running game right now. Yeah, they could look, it looks like Mount Vernon's filling the hole, right? I mean, there's no place for him to go. He gets up to the line of scrimmage, and they're, you know, he's going to have to start going sideways or something. Terrace again, 2009, went to the playoffs for the first time in school history. That's 45 yards. Now he pitches now. it out to Palmer on the right side. He's got a first down and more on the right-hand side, far sideline. Keeps in bounds all the way down to the 15-yard line, finally brought down by Brock Horn Buckle. The buckle. The buckle's all over it. But if Glacier Peak just keeps running an option like that, they're going to be moving that ball down the sideline. Those chains are just going to keep moving. Pretty soon they're going to be in the end zone. Clock ticking now here in the third quarter, 42 seconds and counting. Chris Becerra gets it, hands it off to Michael Palmer on the left side. Now stutter steps and can't get his feet. Did he trip over that yellow line out there? I don't know what he did. He tried to make a cut and looked like, actually looked like Glacier Peak players from last week at uh, Edmond Stadium. That is a short, wet grass that they played on last week. A lot of players slipping. So 14 seconds now. Clock still winding down here in the third quarter. Second and 10 on the Terrace 15. Becerra hands it off to Palmer again. Up the gut. He's got some room now. Gets all the way down to the six or seven yard line. And that will do it for the third quarter. Glacier Peak on top, big still, 45. But Terrace gets on the board with seven points. You're watching and listening to Glacier Peak football on the Snohomish Times Sports Network.